if you're trying to get a business loan and uh, you happen to be in a situation where you know that uh, you got to really pay attention to every element in a business loan application, it's important to know the loan requirements that lenders pay attention to. And this is what I want to talk to you today about. And it's really important whether you are new, uh, you are new, let's say you are an entrepreneur, you are like a, a startup owner, or you own an established business, or you've been, you've been somewhere in between. It's really important to understand that there are things that uh, lenders of all, of all sorts, I'm speaking about your local credit union, I'm speaking about your local bank, your state bank, your national bank, your regional bank, doesn't your, your international bank, your online lender, they pay attention to a few things, okay? So here is the overview I really want you to pay attention to. So when we talk about business loan requirements, there are a few tough hacks I want you to really pay attention to right now. First, first thing first, you want to systematically work on your business credit score and your personal credit score. And I mean systematically. You have to simultaneously and systematically. What I'm trying to say here is that this is this is, should be something on your agenda every single day. What kind of strategies you should put in place to actually have a high FICO score, to have a high payday score, okay? And, uh, and you know, the funny thing is there was an article not long ago in the Harvard Business Review, and they were talking about the importance of good business credit scores and personal credit scores simultaneously. Because uh, if you have one, if one is good and the other is bad, you kind of defeat the, you defeat the purpose. Like, let's say if you have a high business score, business credit score, and you have a low credit score personally, or vice versa, you're not going to, you're not presenting a good picture. You're not painting a good picture to the, to the business lender, to the lender, okay? By the way, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. You know, we love having these conversations every now and then to sort of, uh, you know, entertain and also educate the, the, the folks when it comes to business loan requirements, business loan of credit, all that kind of interesting, all those kinds of interesting topics, okay? So when we talk about you simultaneously working on your business credit scores and your personal credit scores, it means that you need to have, a, for example, you need to sign up for services that allow you to monitor your credit score personally on, a, on, a, on an ongoing basis, but you also need to sign up for Don and Bradstreet, Experian, and Equifax to monitor your business credit scores continually, continually. And it's not a lot of cash. I mean, on the business side, you probably have to pay like $100 to uh to monitor your business credit scores on all three bureaus on the person on the business side on the personal side is free the second thing you have to really pay attention to here is the uh, annual business revenue and profits by the way i just want to quickly remind you of today's topic we are talking about uh, business loan requirements the hacks you need to know okay what are the things you need to know? So when you walk into a bank, if you walk to, into a bank right now, I want you to actually walk with the head high and be very confident and the lender is asking you any question, you can actually answer. And you know what? Because you have the answers. You have thought about it before. You understand everything. Nobody, Nobody's going to trick you, okay? So annual business revenue and profit is important. Now the lender, to the lender, it's not about the number. The lender, When the lender analyzes your revenue, the lender is looking at three things. The lender is looking at number one, your revenue this year versus last year. It's called historical trend analysis. So what is what are the trends? Is your business making more money over time or is the business losing money? So that's historical trend analysis. That's number one. Number two, the lender is actually comparing your revenue and profits for that matter to what's, real, to what's really happening in the industry. So the lender is paying attention to, hey, listen, is this company kicking ass for real or this is just, you know, this company is just uh, being a laggard in the industry. Like, because if, if you walk around and tell the lender, hey, you know, I'm making $1 million. And they realize that the other, you know, all players, other players in the industry are making $10 million, you, you know, they'll they start looking at your ass like, hey, you know, you're kind of lazy ass, whatever, you know. So that's number two. And that's called contextual analysis or sometimes comparative analysis. And the third thing that business lenders are looking at, they pay attention to your accounting processes. What are the uh, what are your, your your controls? Okay, what it, what is the strength of your accounting process? Because if you're telling me that you are making one million dollars a year, but I realize that your account your accounting is really dodgy, and instead of having a uh, accrual accounting, you're using, for example, cash accounting. I'm like, hmm. I'm not saying cash accounting is bad, but accrual accounting is, is way better for 
for a lot of reasons. I mean, I don't have time to d to discuss that here. But if the lender is looking at uh, this and the lender is, is, is saying that there are there are weaknesses in your controls, it, this could be a problem. And that's called operational analysis. So when we talk about uh, annual business revenue and profit, the lender actually pays attention to the, to this triple analysis. The lender also looks at your time in business. How long have you been in business? Okay, if you're telling me that you you have made a one million dollars a year and you've been only in business for two years unless you you come you're some kind of genius whatever the lender is not going to believe you so any anything any number anything you tell a lender the lender is going to analyze the number or the data you are giving them in the context okay and chronological context chronology is really important time is really important okay i mean we know that a lot of uh 92 percent of our startups fail within the first three years boss three years and more than 90 percent so the time in business is really important and there is an there's another another uh, element that's really important for you to really remember here that's your debt to income ratio okay your company's debt to income ratio boss I mean, I, you know, if you've never heard this before, you probably heard this uh, on the personal side. That's true. On the personal side, that's kind of important. But now I'm talking to you about the business side. The business side, because the thing is that you probably could, could just walk around telling everybody, hey, you know, my business is making money. I'm I'm bowling. I, you know, I'm banking. I'm just banging like whatever. I'm getting, I'm getting, whew. Boss, if your DTI, your DTI ratio is very high, then you're not really making money because you actually uh, think you think you're making money, but you are you just accumulating debt in the process. You just are shifting debt, or you're shifting revenue for debt, or vice versa, whatever it is. So debt to income ratio is an important liquidity criteria that lenders pay attention to. Okay, they want to make sure that you have enough bandwidth, enough enough um, enough room enough wiggle room in your monetary spectrum, in your budgetary spectrum to actually uh, take care of whatever em emergencies there are in your industry. You know, I mean, not long ago, a lot of uh, people were kind of scared about, you know, banks filing for bankruptcy. The Wall Street Journal talking about the stock market is going cuckoo, you know, having some kind of crazy yo-yo. And when you have this sort of uh, panic, I'm talking about overall panic and the banks realizing that you don't have enough enough uh, bandwidth to actually uh, manage or man or handle an emergency this could be problematic that's why a lot of small businesses if they don't have cash in hand and you know god forbid one customer files for, one customer files for bankruptcy they have nothing and what do they do they actually go back and ask for a business line of credit or they ask for a working capital loan cap working capital business loan that's kind of crazy you know it's really crazy so debt to income ratio is really important by the way I, I want to quickly remind you once again of uh, the topic, today's topic. I'm talking to you, I'm giving you business loan requirements, a few hacks here and there so that you can actually manage the whole, you can navigate, you know, a business loan application and always get approved, always get approved, boss. And now when we talk about a DTI, uh, a DTI of 40% or less is good. On the personal side, lenders want you to be around 33%. But on the business side, you can go a little up, you know, that's fine. But if you go above that, they'll say your, your, your business is leveraged. You don't want that. The, the next thing I want to talk about here is the debt service coverage ratio. And uh, this, uh, this, ra this uh, ratio is kind of similar. There's a strong correlation, a strong correlation between your DSCR and your DTI, among other things. And the thing is, when we analyze a company's DSCR, we pay attention to not only the debt service, but we pay attention to how the DSCR relates to two other important, important accounting statements. We'll look at the balance sheet and we'll look at the, the cash flow statements. The thing here is that when you talk about the DTI, debt to income ratio, you have the income elements, which relates to the income statement, the statement of profit and loss, right? But when you talk about the debt service coverage ratio, coverage ratio, you are talking about what? Because your DC TSCR measures your business's annual operating income in relations to its total annual debt. Debt, and debt has to debt is a component of the balance sheet. 
debt is actually it can either be a short term as a short term liability or a long term liability. OK, so we have right there the balance sheet component. But the the, the importance of uh, the cash flow statement is because you are going to need cash to actually uh, repay your debt. And when you first got the debt, you actually had to put it on your, on your balance sheet. So this is a correlation I want you to really see. So you have a clear idea of what I'm talking about. OK, normally when you when you actually get the. Uh, loan proceeds you have to report this on uh, on the cash flow statement it's something called cash flows from financing activities and and uh, and uh, the debt has to go on the balance sheet as a long term or short term liability depending on the repayment window okay i just do i just wanted to quickly clarify those things for you so you understand the correlation between the dscr the ink the, the the balance sheet and the cash flow statement I want to talk to you about collateral for secure loans. Now, the thing here, the thing we see sometimes is that, you know, a lot of uh, business owners, they want to apply for secure loans, but they have no idea about the value of their underlying uh, collateral. This is a big mistake. This is actually a, a rookie mistake. You know why? Because uh, basically you are you are asking uh, a lender to give you money to lend you based on a certain on a numerical representation like for instance i'm saying i have a piece of equipment and i want to get a loan and uh, my piece of equipment is worth one million dollars now i want to pledge this piece of equipment to sort of guarantee the loan but you know the last time i actually appraised this piece of equipment was 13 years ago you know when i was like maybe uh when i was struggling when i started my business that's kind of crazy 13 years i mean the piece of equipment would have uh, been impaired there's something called impairment in accounting there's something called uh obsolescence so you have uh you know time passing by and, and things are losing value not just the equipment but everybody loses value anyway right but the point i'm trying maybe not wine <laughs> the point i'm trying to make here is that if you want to have if you want to apply for secure loans it's very important to understand that there is a process in place and the lender is going to ask for an appraisal an appraisal of the loan and some lenders not the loan an appraisal of the of the asset of the underlying asset and a lot of uh, a lot of lenders what they do is they ask multiple appraisers not just one or two they ask three or four depending on the magnitude of the loan amount you're asking for so when you have this situation where you have to tell the lender hey listen i think my piece of equipment is kind of legit they're like yeah you know we believe your ass but you know let, let us check you know control does not exclude uh like trust does not does not exclude control right we want to check things ourselves so be very clear to make sure that uh, you have your collateral that you are going to pledge for any secure loan that that collateral can actually satisfy the loan amount okay and sometimes the lender is not even going to ask you to actually uh, like the value of the underlying asset must be more than the secure loan that you are asking for what i'm trying to say here is that if you have a, a piece of equipment worth let's say $1 million, the lender is not going to give you a $1 million. They'll give you about maybe uh, 800 or 750 to kind of keep some kind of margin. Okay. One thing you really need to understand, and this is something that a lot of folks don't pay attention to is that uh, your industry matters a lot. When we talk about business loan, you know, the first thing you think about is, you know, my credit score. My personal credit score, my business credit score, I have bad credit, I have good credit. But one thing you don't know here, and sometimes you say, you know, I'm not making enough money. Like I have a startup and um, you know, my startup is not making money. But you're forgetting a very important criterion here. And the important criterion here is that uh, the industry you're in matters way more because those underwriters at the bank or credit union or online lenders you are going to apply at, those underwriters, they are reading industry reports all the time. Especially, God forbid, if you if they happen to be special, like if they happen to specialize in the type of industry you're in, whew, you you bet they know a lot more than you. I mean, those guys they have a you know Bloomberg and open all you know Bloomberg TV on all day. They have a Fox News, a Fox Business Channel all day, CNN Money and all that, CNBC, whatever. They have those uh, those uh, networks open all day, so they know what's happening in the economy. You know, they know if a bank is filing for bankruptcy, if they know insurance insurance companies are struggling, they read the Wall Street Journal, they read the Barron's, they read uh, they read Market Watch, they read Yahoo Finance, they read uh, Bloomberg Business Week, they read everything. 
They were receiving money, you name it, okay? So the point I'm trying to make is what? The point I'm trying to make here is that they have information, boss. They have information. Do you have information about your own industry? Talk to me about that. Instead of, instead of working around just, you know, complaining and whining and whining and whining, yeah, you know, I don't believe, I don't understand why, you know, I, I apply for a business loan. They just keep denying my ass, blah, 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 blah. You haven't done the research. You have not done the research. How do you intend to actually uh, cope with the with the new situation? I mean, if your industry is struggling, you should be the first one to know about it. it should be the, you should be the first one to have answers if they ever ask you. In other words, you should be able, you should be able to be in a situation where you can contextualize your situation, your, your your profile. What am I trying to say here? What I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that if you know your industry is going down, you should be able to tell the lender why your company of all companies should be getting a loan in this sort of dire situation. That's what research does. Research gives you the, the tools and resources to answer any question. The, the last and final thing I want you to really pay attention to here is business plans. You know, the funny thing is that when we talk about a business plan and we see this in, in comments, you know, all the time, and sometimes we get emails. It's kind of funny. We get emails every single day. We get, we get hundreds of emails. A lot of our viewers, they don't want to comment on our videos. They just want to ask questions directly, but it's okay if you email, you know, and the thing here is people ask about why, you know, I want to, I want to apply for a business loan. My credit is good. My my personal credit is good. My business credit is bad. And what are the things I need? I have everything, but I just want to confirm with you. And our first question is, do you have a business plan? They're like, oh, uh, no. Do I need it? You, 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 are, you are damn right that you need a business loan. You need a business plan. You need a business plan. Boss, if you're listening to me right now, I want you to, I want you to really, yeah, like, your business plan should be the first, the very first element in your business loan application package and, and i'm not just talking about a, a cheap ass business plan i'm talking about a business plan that has uh, all the accountants all the important elements financial projections the purpose of using the the funds you know use of loan proceeds the industry outlook that i just spoke about competitive analysis competitive outlook those are important elements okay and then you have to add it to the business plan other elements, other paperwork, your bank statements, your personal and, bank and business tax returns, business licenses and permits, your EIN, proof of collateral, your financial statements, you know, ownership and affiliations. If you have uh, some legal contract, the major legal contracts and agreements. And uh, th now this list might sound like a long list to you, but I guarantee you it's not. It really depends on the lender. It also the length of the paperwork, the, the depth and the length of uh, the application package. Well, it depends on, on the lender, but also on uh, the magnitude of the loan amount. I mean, the magnitude of the loan. So let's say if you are asking for a $1 million in business loan, the paperwork requirements will not be the same as if you are asking for a $10,000 business loan, right? This makes sense. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate that. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about uh, a few hacks, a few hacks when it comes to business loan requirements. And the whole thing is to get you uh, approved real fast. Okay. So number one, you have business and personal credit scores. Number two, we have annual business revenue and profits. Number three, we have a time in business. Number four, we have debt to income ratio. Number five, debt service coverage ratio. Number six, collateral for secure loans. Number seven, your industry matters, okay? And number eight, your business plan and ancillary documentation, okay? Thank you. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.